Hi everyone, this is Mo Volans back with another video on synthesis, subtractive synthesis that is, and we are looking at LFOs today. Now in the last video that I did that was about envelopes, you saw me finish off using an envelope to increase and decrease the speed of an LFO, and this brings us nicely to the subject of LFOs or low frequency oscillators if you want to give them their full name. Now I'm, I'm assuming that you understand what these are and that you've used them to some extent or seen them in use in uh, pre-created patches. But ultimately they are used as a trigger, they're very much uh, a modulator, very much like um, envelopes, and they're used to affect any part of the synth that you like, any module that you like. So they can affect um, pitch, they can affect frequency uh, in a filter, they can affect effect sends, they can affect um, anything you can think of as long as it's in the list of uh, modulation sources and destinations in your synthesizer. Now Thor's got more than most um, and it is a pretty complicated synth. Don't worry too much that we're working in Thor. I just find it a great uh, synth to teach with uh, because we can change all the modules and we can quickly uh, change the sound that we're working with. But if you've got any subtractive synth that's got oscillators and filters and envelopes and uh, LFOs, which is most of them, then you should be able to follow along nicely. So we're going to concentrate on a few tips and tricks with LFOs today. Um, I'm not going to uh, go into the basics like vibrato and stuff, but uh, I'm going to show you two or three things that I think you're going to find useful. So first up, I wanted to show you how to tempo sync um, LFOs, and I wanted to show you how to um, manipulate that tempo sync um, in real time so that we can get some pretty cool effects. I'm then going to move on to something called sample and hold, which I think is a really nice sound, and we'll see that in action. Um, but first up, let's have a listen to what I'm doing here. I've got a similar sound that we were working with in the last video, but I've tweaked it slightly. Um, I made it a little bit more aggressive. And I think what we're heading for here is a bass sound. Now it's a detuned, uh, multi-oscillated, noise-based uh, sound. Add some portamento to this, some glide, and we're going to start getting a really cool sound. <laughs> sort of a Reese type sort of a thing uh, with a little bit of um, very short delay for atmospherics and some pretty heavy drive from a soft clip shaper there below the filter. A touch of resonance. Um, but what it really needs is some modulation. Now, um, you know, this sort of wub 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 wobble is going to be pretty popular with a lot of people um, and maybe not so popular with others. But really what I'm trying to show you is just how to um, sync um, LFOs and how to uh, manipulate that sync. So let's get something going here. Now I've already got LFO 1 mapped to filter frequency 1 so we can just turn that up and we should hear the effect. Now at this stage we've got three things we can do. We can alter the frequency, we can alter the amount of modulation which is the depth and we can alter the speed of the LFO, the rate over here. So let's alter that rate. We can open the filter up. And we can change the depth, the intensity, if you like. So they're the three main controls you're going to be balancing at this stage. Now, if you're going to change any of those things, you're probably going to change the frequency and you're probably going to change the rate. Now the frequency can be easily mapped to say the mod wheel or something on your controller, like I've got it mapped here. See, I'm not touching that with a mouse, that's, let me just move the mouse out of the way. That's uh, mapped to my Novation auto map system here. <laughs> So that's easily mappable to anything you like, and uh, it's really a performance controller. But how about um, if we want to change the, um, the speed in real time, and how about if we want that speed to match to our project? Now, tempo syncing the effect is really simple. There's a tempo sync button here in the LFO, and as soon as we do that, you'll see that the rate without tempo sync is in hertz, so it's free running. Add the tempo sync, and we're suddenly in musical measures. Now, that's not going to make much sense until we add something rhythmical. So uh, here's one I made earlier. No, I didn't make it. It's uh, just a simple dubstep loop from the, um, the Reason library. And once we've started this loop off, we should be able to hear some tempo sync in action. 
Now, you heard me changing the speed, and because we've got it in tempo sync mode, and this is key, that it will stay in time. And pretty much any LFO that's got tempo sync now will do this. And it's, it's really important because we can manipulate this and automate it, and uh, the whole thing will stay in time. So let's have a listen to that again. And let's start it off faster this time. We'll start it on 16th. And if I change this, it'll stay exactly in time. Great, so you get the picture, you're able to change that and it'll stay locked. And that can be automated into your project. So you could hit record on whatever track you like and whatever DAW you're in and just automate that in. And then you can edit that later. So you can make really complex patterns with Sync's LFOs in that way. So give that a go and don't just try it with the low pass, uh, low pass frequency. It's a great way to demonstrate it, but you can use that on pretty much anything you like. Try it with pitch, try it with effect sends. Um, try it with the resonance on the on the filter or um, oscillator levels and you'll be able to get some pretty cool effects. Now, one thing I'd like to show you that moves away from this a little bit is using various uh, different um, LFO wave shapes. We're just using a sine wave based wave shape and it's probably the most common that you're going to come across. Um, uh, but you, obviously there's quite a few here. Um, we've got triangles, uh, ramps, and right at the end, generally, you have some pretty interesting shapes. We've got stepped shapes, uh, stepped triangles. But um, what, the one I want to concentrate on is the random waveforms. Now, we've got a smooth one or we've got a, a stepped one. I quite like the step random. And we can make something called sample and hold here. Um, and it was really popular in the 90s, um, but it's coming back a little bit. And I think that it's quite an interesting one to get your head around. Um, with tempo sync engaged, if we raise the resonance and, and dial in plenty of uh, LFO modulation, now that's a little bit too slow, so let's speed it up. So that is synced at 16th, 1 16th. And uh, it's on stepped random. We've got plenty of resonance dialed in, and it's going straight to the uh, the filter cutoff. So it's just one example of what you can achieve with syncing and some of the stranger and more uh, exotic waveforms. So there you go, there's synced LFOs and using LFOs to, uh, to manipulate filters and uh, manipulate other parameters. Hopefully that's been a, a, a decent insight for you into using LFOs in your productions. And uh, remember, um, it's not just uh, for extreme sort of dubstep bases you're going to be using this. You can use this in chill out stuff to, uh, to make really atmospheric pads and you can use it in pretty much um, any kind of music you like to manipulate lead sounds and uh, other bass sounds. So uh, go ahead, give it a shot yourself and uh, give me suggestions for things you'd like to learn about in the future. And if you'd like me to go more uh, into more depth with these subjects and I'll maybe do an advanced series. That's, uh, that's it from me for now on this series and uh, I'll see you soon.